Greetings and salutations. This is Abe Abdelhadi with The Bitter Truth, where we may not have all the answers, but we're going to ask an awful lot of questions. You can also become a bitter pill for a mere $2 a month and support the show at patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. Uh, my guest today is Vicki Goodwin, and she's running for state representative in House District 47 here in Austin, Texas. And she's running as a Democrat against uh, Republican Paul Workman. And uh, we're going to just jump right into it and start uh, having a conversation. So, Vicki, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm really well. Thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. So talk to us. Uh, so how did you get to Austin? How did you decide to run? What, what's your little trajectory here? Sure. So I got to Austin the same way so many people came here. I came to UT in the mid 80s and graduated from there, went to the LBJ school. So got my master's in public affairs. And you would think, OK, she's all set up for uh, working in the government, running for office. But that really wasn't my trajectory. I ended up getting into the real estate business and have been doing that for 15 years, Uh, raised my family. I've got three kids. My husband has two. And uh, over the years have just been following politics on the side. I helped other candidates with block walking, phone banking, just getting involved as much as I could. But I always figured it would be a sideline until 2016 happened. And, uh, you know, every day since then, I've felt more and more compelled to run for office. So here I am. Here you are, and 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 you know, it's it, a lot of women are running. That's right. This year, and a lot, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot, a, a lot of women done got woke. Is, is what what happened? I think. I mean, soon, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So you were involved in because I'm going to j- jump in a couple things real quick. So you were involved in politics before 2016. Yes. Okay. So you you kind of knew the players. You kind of knew what was going on. You were right. paying attention to world events. That was an interest to you. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly at the state level, for I've um, watched this particular seat because, like I said, my kids went through the Austin schools, and we, and to be honest, even before that, I was paying attention to our school finance system. My mom, when I was growing up, was on the Dallas School Board okay. and talked about what a horrible school finance system we had in the 80s, and here we are. It's it's just as bad. We've got what's called the Robin Hood system, which I'm I'm fine with sharing the wealth, but when it gets so um, unsustainable for the Austin School District, which it has, it's just needs to be fixed. So Austin this year is paying 430. I mean, I'm sorry, 530 million dollars into recapture, and they're having to take 30 million dollars out of their reserve fund in order to make their budget work. And next year, um, they're expected to pay over 600 million dollars to to Robinhood, and they'll have to be taking money out of the reserves again. And they can only do that for a few years before their reserves are completely gone. Okay. Cool. Well, let me back up a second because um, I agree with you 100%. Uh, and when I talk to my more conservative friends, they get really uh, pissy about mm-hmm. that term share of the wealth. And I like to explain to them, it's not about coming to take your crap. <laughs> it's about basically paying the fair share of taxes. And I'm sorry, but if you're not in the upper 0.001%, you are paying their fair share of taxes. The richest 225 people in the world control the wealth that is more than the lower 47% combined. Right. And so when you look at, for example, IBM getting a half a billion dollar tax refund last year and Apple paying 0.005%, their secretaries are paying a higher percentage. Right. So it's not about like, oh, we're gonna come, you know, a bunch of Cossacks <laughs> raiding the gates of the Holy Roman Empire. It's just basically, hey, you live here, you're capitalist, and, and I'm, I'm a fan of the ideas. Jim Rohn says all capitalists should pay taxes. Right. You know, we get the roads, we get the schools, and- We get a benefit out of it. We get a benefit out of it. And it's a benefit not to have people who are falling through the cracks in our society. It's a benefit to support people so that they can make a better life for themselves, so they can buy the goods and services that these companies make. So my my feeling is we need to stop relying quite so heavily on property taxes and rely more on our corporations who are benefiting from an educated population. Well, let me ask you about that a little bit. I, I, mm-hmm. In fact, you brought it up, so I, I, it wasn't even on my notes. But um, the property tax, for example, I just uh, a couple weeks back, Kerry McKinnon, who's running for lieutenant governor of uh, Texas against Lieutenant Dan <laughs> and uh, Mike Collier, um, the Democratic uh, challenger, um, Kerry McKinnon had an interesting idea. He said that, because I was championing the idea of Proposition 13 here in Texas, which is a cool idea, but I won't get into it because it's a big explanation. But <laughs> Kerry McKinnon's explanation was simpler and I think would be an easier um, pill to swallow here in Texas is that you pay your property tax as long as you're paying your mortgage. And when the mortgage is paid off, you no longer pay property tax. 
And then this would kind of avoid the the situation where we've got people literally priced out of their homes because of property tax. The homes have been paid off for years and years, but mm -hmm. because the county keeps assessing their value and the house was paid for in 1965, but it's now worth a million dollars. So now you're paying property tax on a million dollars and you don't have a million dollars property tax type income to pay that property tax. What do you think of that? Well, so then what about people who pay cash to buy a home? They would never pay property taxes? Probably not. That would be the 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 the, the minor, you know, they might pay like a one-time fee to the state kind of a thing, but that would be the, the guys that slip through the cracks. Yeah. And so that's know. that was his idea. Otherwise, you could do a Proposition 13, which is the, the quick thumbnail. Mm -hmm. We have in California for 40 years now, and both sides of the aisle like it, mm -hmm. is um, you whatever you paid for your house, you pay that property tax rate for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. If you refi the house, then that new assessment is the new property tax rate. So if you buy a house for eighty grand in 1979, you're paying property tax on $80,000. If you refi the home, if it's now worth $700,000, now you're paying property tax on $700,000. If, if you sell the home, the new owner has that property tax rate at the new price. So you're saying that the value is frozen basically for the purposes of property taxes. Yep. Never goes up. And then and then people, people always... California knows how, knows, how, knows how it works, but when I explain it to people outside of California, mm -hmm. well, then how do you fund the school? Well, because it's California and people are always refining their homes and oh. people are always selling their homes. And so we count on 70% of the homeowner population buying and or reselling their homes. And so what ends up happening is you've got folks, or refining their homes rather. Mm -hmm. So you've got folks actually um, you know, contributing property, significant property tax. It's just that it doesn't continually go up. Like, right. like the irony is here we have one of the lower property tax rates in this in, in the country. But our values go up so much. Yeah. And they keep reassessing you every year. Right. And then I got I got uh, lunch today with a realtor friend of mine and she brought up another good idea, which mm -hmm. I thought was kind of cool, is instead of on the value, you just pay the tax on the difference. On the difference of what? Like say last year's assessment to this year's assessment. Oh. So you just pay the tax on that. Um, I don't know about that. Or I Or we can make pot legal and have hemp. <laughs> And that was another Kerry McKinnon idea, which, you know, he and I, you know? we knocked heads a lot, but we agreed on that. And, that, yeah. you know, make hemp legal, mm -hmm. you know, just totally tell the cotton industry and all these other industries and yeah. to go take a hike and that kind of thing. But so anyway, but, <laughs> but so um, I know, you, so you brought that up and how would you want to fund the schools other than property tax? Like, what would you... So there's a number of different options. Looking at what's in our budget right now, we send $800 million to the border, for example, which honestly should be a federal expense. That's uh, one way we- um, Wait, the state of Texas does. Correct. Okay. Right. So that's in the state budget, which really it should be coming from the federal. <clears throat> Same kind of concept. We should be accepting federal dollars back to Texas through a Medicaid expansion in order to cover more people, um, give them insurance, and also, again, bring back our dollars, our tax dollars back to the state. Why wouldn't we want to do that? Right. There's also um, the fact that a lot of properties aren't appraised at their true market value, particularly the larger commercial properties mm -hmm. that are harder to appraise. Mm -hmm. Because we don't disclose our sales prices, it's hard to know, it's hard to come up with a good value. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of guesswork and formulas. So I've seen over the years a lot of homes and commercial, I, I don't work with commercial, but in the homes, values that are not true market value. Okay. So you're you might have somebody paying more taxes and somebody paying less taxes than they would if we had a better valuation. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, and then, you know, that being said, do you think that the, the state uh, legislature, legislature, could they support, get behind like a flat property tax, for example, that is not mm -hmm. done every year? I think right. it's, I think it's, I don't, honestly, I think it's kind of a shyst to to assess your property every year, mm -hmm. and because it goes up, you know, and, and you don't own your property, you technically don't own your property the way that's set up. If if you're, you're these, some of these people's uh, people's, I can talk some of these people down in Barton Springs, for example, mm -hmm. you know, it's like th th uh, they're in a million dollar home, half a million dollar home, and it was per purchased like for fifteen thousand dollars in nineteen sixty eight. It's been paid off for years and years and years. Right. You don't pay your property tax, they'll seize the home. Hmm. So where's the justice in that way? What, 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 what is, how, how, how do you see that fit playing out? Yeah, I, I, it's a very interesting concept you bring up about not raising the value every year, keeping the tax at the same value. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I, I don't know that I agree with when you pay it off or if you paid cash. You oh, these, you know, these are just ideas. So, yeah. Right. I mean, so so I, I think it's a very interesting idea, keeping the values at the same, keeping the values the same from year to year so that people aren't priced out of their home just based on the property tax. And then the trade off, too, is we don't have state tax here. Mm-hmm. I came from California. It's like a 13 percent raise. S- you know. State income tax, right? Yeah, it's like, hey, thanks yeah. for moving to Texas. Hey, you know, that's like it's a, a race. That's a deal breaker here in Texas. I think you know, I I think if people really saw the numbers, what would it mean if you were paying an income tax mm-hmm. versus paying your property tax? I think people might say, "Ooh, look, this actually could benefit a lot of people." Mm-hmm. But it's it, we've got a mental block. But, but we would never. Let's, let, let, I, don't, I don't want you to get all libertarian on me and have like an airy fairy, you know, the government should be out of our lives. Yeah, and I should be Brad Pitt with ripped abs <laughs> and well read and have a million dollars. No, I, I mean, mean it, government it, serves a very good purpose. Yeah, but we're not going to replace the property tax with a state income tax. If we had a right. state income tax, it would be right alongside oh. the property tax. Um, you know, we we would reduce the property tax. You think we Sig- you, significantly? You think yes? We would. Okay. Actually, in two thousand five, the d- school districts took um took the state to court okay. over our school finance system. And the court said, yes, it's unconstitutional. You've got to fix it. And so at that time, they actually did raise the franchise tax and lowered the property tax pretty significantly. Okay. So and, it can be done. Okay. But you, do you see it being done in this climate? Um, well, that's, you know, we have elections all the time. And yeah. if, if the election goes well, then possibly. Okay. Well, <laughs> and I, I want to get into that really quick, but I want to I want to kind of piggyback on what you mentioned earlier, because I didn't know this, that we spent $800 million a year at the border. I didn't know that the state actually spent, I mean, I know we had like state police and those guys that patrol the border, but I didn't know we actually kicked in extra money right. on top of that. Is that, is that, is that right? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to spitball here. $800 million is an awful lot of money. That's like a billion dollars. Right. Could we afford single payer in Texas for that? A little more than that? Yeah. Yeah. Universal health care. Yeah. Big yeah. fan. You know, I, yeah, I am too. I 2% think. overhead, by the way. People don't care about that, but it's a true story. Well, that is true. That That's a very important thing for people to know that Medicare has 2% overhead because you don't have a big insurance company paying the bills. Right. And and the thing is, I think for people to understand is um, with Medicare, they're just paying the bills. They're not they're not taking over doctors, they're not taking over no. hospitals. It's no. not government run no. health care. That's, that's the difference I always make to people because they like to say things like, well the VA sucks. Ah, the VA is a provider. Medicare is a payee. Right. And this is my day job, so neener neener. I know what I'm talking <laughs> about a teeny bit. But but that's that's what they, it's a straw man argument. Mm-hmm. You know, the failures of the VA whereas Seventy percent of people on Medicare. My, I don't know about your parents. My mom's on Medicare. It works fine. She's never been denied anything. MRIs, whatever. I mean, she always, you know, she'll argue with her doctor because she doesn't like the taste of the pills or something or or, yeah. or whatever. But it, it's it's not like insurance. And then the, I saw a statistic about two years ago that the amount of errors that Medicare finds on bills is like ninety percent of bills they find errors on. Hmm. Whereas the amount of errors that the private insurance industry finds on bills is like ten percent. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? So they're looking closer, you think? Looking closer, yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe they don't, because Big you know, big Blue doesn't care if you're going to spend 500 bucks on gauze because mm-hmm. they're just going to raise the rates on the company for high utilization anyway, or the individual family. Well, there's a lot, of, a lot of cost shifting as well. So people who can't pay aren't paying, and so the people that can pay are paying more. Mm-hmm. We, we shift the cost onto those who can pay in the system that we have. Well, and so as I... Um, why is it easy for a guy like Paul Workman, because I looked him up a little bit too, mm-hmm. to demonize social programs like that? Well, he knows that there's certain words that get a knee-jerk reaction. Uh-huh. Socialism is one of them. It just right. gets that knee-jerk reaction from some people who feel like, oh, God, this is not going to work here. Mm-hmm. We, we don't want to be a socialized country. Right. And then I always <laughs> ask, I always ask, because I got some conservative friends, and I, you know, I, I should work on two books. One, one is how to have fun with your liberal friends at parties, and one is how to have fun with, fun with your conservative friends at parties. Because um, my conservative friends say the same thing, and I go, well, you don't seem to mind selective socialism. Because we pay the defense industry a trillion dollars a year. Right. And, Medi- and Pen- the Pentagon doesn't even want half the crap that's forced down their throat anyway. <laughs> like they, they were forced to buy a, 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 an aircraft carrier five years ago for $13 billion. That puts a million and a half kids through college. Yep. $70 billion a year would put everybody through college. Exactly. Which yeah. is where I went for free. My school was $100 a quarter when mm-hmm. I went to college, Cal Poly Pomona. Yeah. Now it's $5,000. I don't know if an espresso comes with it now or a massage for those 12 units, but I only paid 100 Yeah. And now it's five grand. It's crazy. And well, 
Did you hear there's a medical school up in New York that is- NYU. NYU they has did it. free tuition. tuition. As it used to be. Yeah. It used to be if you went to a state school, you try to get into a state school for law school. Like when I was a kid, mm-hmm. if you're going to go to UCLA or any of the Cal State schools, UC Berkeley, mm-hmm. the, the reason you went was because it was the same $300 a semester as it was when you were an undergrad. You're just now going to law school. <laughs> Whereas USC was 20 grand a year back in the 80s. Right. Because it's a private school. Right. So you didn't want to go to private school. You wanted to go to public school. I remember I had some friends going to film school. And they went to the Art Center of Design in Pasadena, which costs like $11 billion a year. And I'm like, why are you going there? <laughs> UCLA has a great film school and it's like free. Mm-hmm. You know, and they go, no, man, so-and-so went there. Yeah, and so-and-so's dad is from India and he's got a trust fund. That You're not that guy. But you know, that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, so let's talk about uh, Paul Workman and also, you know, just the, 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 you know, the big albatross. I was, you know, um, why did you run as a Democrat, not say, for example, as a Justice Democrat? As a Democrat and not as a justice Democrat, you know what's a justice? Uh, the well the justice, the justice Democrats are uh, it was Jenk Uger and Kyle Kalinske and they kind of did a Tea Party version of the Democrats after 2016 mm. and you know like um, Alexandria uh, Arcasio Cortez is, is, is a Democratic Socialist of America, oh. but then there's people like her that are running under the Justice Democrat banner. Okay, and so anyway, there's a lot. I didn't know that banner existed. So. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> No, no harm, no problem. So I've been a Democrat since I went to the LBJ school. I really felt like the message there, doing things for the greater good, really resonated with me. Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, that's how society should be. We we should help all people to be the best that they can be. Sure. You know, I remember in elementary school, one of my coaches said, we are only as strong as our weakest link, or Mm -hmm. a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And that's just like society, you know. We can't keep having people fall through the cracks because it, that does not lead to a good, healthy society. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, that being said, and so where, do, where, how do you, what is the democratic platform this fall? Because hating Trump is not a worldview. No, absolutely not. Supporting public education, mm-hmm. working towards everybody having health care that they need, mm-hmm. um, environmental issues, you know, we, we have to take care of our environment. Because okay. we only have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those are the big ones. I think healthcare, <clears throat> environment, education. And that's something you could do in Texas. And I know the bigger picture, you're, which you're not running on because you're running for a, a, a state representative seat in mm-hmm. Texas. You're not running for a Congress right. position or a, rep, a House uh, uh, con- uh, when I came to speak today. Um, yeah, I'm not running for Congress. But, you know, they right. all we both deal with the same things. We just have different areas that we deal with it. Like education right there um 10 percent of our education is funded by the federal government mm-hmm. so they deal with it a little bit mm-hmm. but 90 percent is state mm-hmm. or local and what, what, what for example with education what could we do better to fund that more effectively because it seems like every state has that excuse me has that challenge every state seems to have that challenge where right there's, no, there's never enough money and it's the first thing they get cut. So that's the thing. There, There is enough money. It's just we don't have the leadership or the will to put the money in the right place. And that's that's one of the reasons I'm running is I feel like our budget should reflect our priorities, right. education and health care. And, um, you know, we spend a lot of money on things that we don't necessarily need to. And, and perhaps <clears throat> we need to raise some revenue. So where does an idiot like Paul Workman, for example, get off telling people because seriously because the, the challenge i have with the democrats the challenge i have with the republicans is why i hate both parties no 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 offense i know a lot of good democrats and i know a few good republicans mm-hmm. um at least the ones that aren't reprehensible um but they, they just there just seems to be no agenda party wise for there's no platform like, like, like there's no like you know nancy pelosi comes on and offers the the the, the better deal you know and she's like reading off some chinese menu that she scribbled some notes on she doesn't even know what the better deal is do you I'm, feel like there's not a democratic platform? No, and I'll tell you exactly why. Because aside from the 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 platitudes, mm-hmm. aside from you know saying nice things, they do the same things. They take the same monies. I mean, let's face it, Obama was the black Reagan. He was just black. That's why the Republicans don't like him. Well, I disagree <laughs> with that. How no, however, hey, listen, he, he took I two do... wars, he took Bush's two illegal wars, turned into eight. I do agree that we need to get money out of out of politics. We need campaign finance reform. Mm-hmm. We, you know, special interests definitely drive a lot of our policy, and it shouldn't. One hundred percent. Well, and then uh, so, uh, 
So for example, when, because now there's all this Russia gate crap, which I think is a load of garbage. I mean, when they finally bust Cheeto Jesus, it's going to be because of money laundering and all this Paul Manafort stuff. Really <laughs> tacky, you know, like Russians with silk shirts down to their navel with the, with the chains, <laughs> with the little espresso sugar. I mean, we all know that he's there involved with one another somehow. As, as, was, <laughs> as was Hillary, as was every, listen, here's the thing. Like, and this is my point. It's like, we, we, we spend so much time on whether or not the president was teabagging strippers and paying for it and, you know, paying them to be, be quiet or whatever in Russiagate. Meanwhile, we got troops on the Chinese border. Uh, last year, Trump dropped 30,000 bombs on Syria which they don't talk about because Obama dropped 26,000 bombs on Syria in 2016 and dropped so many bombs on Syria in 2015, he ran out of bombs for two weeks. Mm. That, that must have been an interesting conversation with like, you know, Raytheon. Like, uh, hi, uh, uh, right, this is uh, uh, Barack and uh, we need to blow up some folks and uh, we're out of bombs. You got to help us out. W- right. W- where is the platform? I see a big party Well, with two wings. Mm-hmm. One is cool with abortions and gay people and the other one is not. And then they take the same money and do the same crap, except for the NRA, which... There's not a single Democrat that takes NRA money that I know of. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I mean, like Beto O'Rourke's running against Ted Cruz, for example. Mm-hmm. And aside from Ted Cruz being a Christian jihadist and Beto O'Rourke was actually cool enough, cool enough to play bass in a punk band <laughs> um, and, and women's rights, there's, there's no difference in their voting record. It's almost identical. Education, defense, you know, uh, single pair. I mean, the, 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 but totally different philosophies. You just you get into office and you have to make some compromises. But I think we have different philosophies and ways to get to where we want to go. Right. For example, I mean, I think most people feel like we've got to have a good educational system. But Republicans want to send our tax dollars into private schools right. through vouchers. Right. And you're only wrong. harming your public education that way. They, they, and this is where the Republicans... But see, this is where, the, 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 where I get angry with the Democrats is because they just lay down. You know, like Chucky the Shoom the other day had all the Dems in the Senate. Well, right now we don't have the power in the in the. You get the power. No one gives it to you. And when you're like, for example, with Brett Kavanaugh, mm-hmm. he told his Senate guys, "No one's going to pay for it if you if you end up voting for Kavanaugh." What the hell is that? No, you circle the wagon. You, you, LBJ, what would he do? <laughs> Not my favorite president, but he signed a lot of good laws for the people. I'm still pissed right. at him about Vietnam, but other than that, <laughs> he signed a lot of good laws for the people. Right. And he corralled people. And he would, you know, poke him in the chest and, you know, and and he would say things like, I, I, I read this part of this book called Masters of the Senate. You're familiar with that four volume set of Robert Carroll? Mm-hmm. He wrote four books on LBJ, a mm-hmm. thousand pages each book. Mm-hmm. And one book that I leafed through because I couldn't get through all of it was Masters of the Senate. And there's a great line in there. Somebody said, how do you do so well getting the Congress to do what you want? And he goes, well, I know what kind of rub he likes on his meat. I know what kind of whiskey he likes. And I know what kind of women he don't bring home to his mama. <laughs> That is so awesome. Relationships, huh? Relationships. It's, and, and, but, but Schumer isn't even trying. It's like McCain is sick, for example. Mm-hmm. So it's 50, not 50 to 49. So you, you marshal the troops, you circle the wagons, and you go pick on three or four of the fat kids in dodgeball on the Republican side. Yeah. And you make them come, come into your side. And Kavanaugh doesn't get you know nominated right. or, or, or voted in. And that's the thing that drives me bananas is when I hear like Elizabeth Warren say, you know, because they laid down all, except for Betsy DeVos, they didn't fight on anybody. Hmm. And their attitude was, and Elizabeth Warren famously said, well, you know, we were afraid they're going to pick somebody worse. Well, then you fight them too. Yeah. No one's fighting anymore. No one's expending political capital anymore. It's sad when I got to go all the way back to Richard Nixon <laughs> for the last guy to expend political capital. They just don't do it. Nobody, yeah. nobody does it. So we need a lot of new people in office. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, and that, and, and so, but you said publicly funded elections. I mean, I, I say to get rid of the electoral college and go to like, you know, rank choice voting. Because then that way you don't have, you know, then, then it's fair. Then middle America, who everyone's afraid is going to get lost in the shuffle without ele- without the Electoral College. Mm-hmm. Now they got a fair voice. Everyone's got a voice. And everyone forgets that Hillary Clinton won that election by three million votes. Mm-hmm. So, 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 no, I haven't forgotten that. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and I'm not a fan. I, I was just like going, wait, don't you have a platform here? Isn't this a good talking point? Mm-hmm. You just lost by three million votes. I mean, is, is that how the conversation went with, with Vladimir and Donald? You know, listen, Mr. Trump, I this thing you have electoral college, no? Okay. <laughs> Don't want to make it look too good. So Hillary, she get the popular <laughs> vote, but you, you know, Mr. President, congratulations. This is how we do it. Yeah. No, yeah. she just was lazy and expected a coronation. And she was thinking she wasn't going to have to go to the states that Obama won. Mm-hmm. Arrogant enough to think that she was the Rolling Stones because Obama and her husband were the Rolling Stones. Much as I didn't like him as a president, he was funny. He could go on a yeah. comedy tour. Yeah, re- for, again, uh, relationships. Relationships. So <clears throat> that being said. Yeah, she took some things for granted. But uh, yeah, she did. anyway, we should probably get back to state level stuff. State huh? level stuff. But see, but is, this, this is where, okay, so talk to me about Paul Workman, because, and this is good for you, and I'll tell you why. Because th- you're running, 
you're never just running in the state level. You're never just running locally. You're running against the national label of the brand. The brand is the Democratic Party. Like Paul Workman has to run against. Well, we can say Paul Workman would be happy to invite Trump here to the district. And I don't think that's a very popular concept. I don't think Trump is over, overwhelmingly popular here. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> well, see, and, here, and, and, and I want to talk about Paul Workman right now. But I mean, but here's but this is the thing that Trump did do. Even though I know he was lying. He said something, other, you know, whereas the Dems, all they had was, oh, he's evil. And, and he had that tape and he grabbed pussy. He's terrible. And the, he was going out there saying, we're going to end the wars, which BS. He was bought like everybody else. We're going to bring jobs back. Which so he BS. basically said a lot of lies. <laughs> yes, he lied. He's a liar. He's been a douchebag for 30 years. He's mm-hmm. a liar. Mm-hmm. But he said all the stuff and people were desperate and happy people don't vote for a demagogue. Mm. So. You know, this is the position we're in, where you have half of all American workers making. Well, another part of the problem is not enough people vote. A lot of people who are doing well, they're happy. They they don't have a lot of problems. They they don't necessarily need to go vote. They don't feel the need to go vote. A lot of people were miserable. The the states that that Hillary lost to Trump Mm -hmm. in in the Electoral College, Mm -hmm. the the survey, black people that voted for Obama in 08 and 12 did not even bother to come out. Hmm. Because she offered nothing. Not, you, you know what you don't do in the middle of a political revolt is vote for a, co- uh, a warmonger corporate whore who's going to take money from the big banks and big oil uh. and big franking and everybody else, which she did. This is an Abe's Gazette or a conspiracy theory. Obama you fracked know, the crap out of this country. Boy, you're pretty down on Hillary. She did a lot of good. She's done a lot of good over the years. Like she destroyed Libya with a failed strategy like Iraq and Bush, which nobody seemed to protest, turned Libya into a failed state. Hmm. Did the same thing with Syria. Had no problem with Obama and sell, and Bush, well, too, selling weapons should, to the Saudis. You should run for office because it sounds like you, you could do a better job, huh? <laughs> you know what? I probably could. And then I'd get shot. And that would be the end of that. Now, I thought about it last fall. I, I, I just, no. It's, uh, you got to go talk to people and take money. I, don't, I didn't want to. Well, yeah. I mean, but it's easy to criticize people. It's, it's easy to criticize leaders without knowing all that they go through. See, but that's and, a cop out. That's a cop out because all, all that they go through, it's not, it's not, it doesn't take me, it doesn't take a leader, it doesn't take LBJ to realize you don't go bomb Libya with the same failed strategy and no exit strategy. Mm-hmm. Turning that place into a failed state with 40 terror groups selling oil on the black market. Mm-hmm. And we got Yemeni slaves there now. And why are the Yemeni slaves in Libya? Oh, they had to escape Yemen. Why? Because the Saudi Arabians are bombing the crap out of them. And we don't even pay attention to the Saudi Arabia. Oh, Russia's a dictatorship and he's bad to his people. They chop off 30 heads a week there, but they're mm-hmm. our allies. And we've been selling weapons to them for years. Bush, Obama, Clinton. It's not just a, this is not a party thing. Mm -hmm. This is a right or wrong thing. And my point to people all the time is that if Hillary Clinton had an R next to her name, you would pay attention to her sins. Because Mm -hmm. when the Iraq war happened, people were protesting Vietnam, like like it was Vietnam. They were out in front of the White House, in front of George Bush's White House with signs. Yeah, people get detracted with other Le- way less important things. I, we don't have a lot of attention on our foreign wars. You know, the, it it doesn't get we covered don't so, anymore. So pe- it doesn't get covered. People don't know what's going on. Right. Well, so let's talk about Paul Workman for a second because have you guys set up a debate? Are you going to debate him? Uh, there's a group or a few groups actually that are trying to pull something together for September 12th. Okay. And then how and then how many candidates are you? You. Workman, is there a libertarian or green person running? No, okay. no third party. And then, so because he, his, he's kind of like just not my kind of person I want to hang out with. So like he's, <laughs> excuse me. And yes, folks, I'm drinking beer. Um, so he's pretty anti-gay. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Anti-education. Yeah. Or he's for pro-vouchers, which is basically ersatz anti-education. Right. Um, so what does he offer the district? Why? Because he's he, was his third term now? Fourth. Fourth term. What does he offer that district? I know it's a moneyed district. There's a lot of folks with money there. Uh, well, his his background is in construction, so um, I, he's gotten the backing of <clears throat> the construction companies. So he's had a lot of money, okay. and it's and this district was drawn to be a Republican district. Okay. So Western Travis County tends to lean uh, Republican. However, over the years, we've had a lot of m- people move into the district, mm-hmm. and you know, I think. I think people have changed their minds over the years as well. So it's really, I think, if you look at the district now, it's 50-50. What can we do about gerrymandering at a state level? What what laws can we, because, I mean, it's basically it's basically Jim Crow light. It's basically an electoral college junior. 
So we need to have an, an <coughs> independent redistricting committee. That's okay. that's the bottom line because when you have your politician drawing the lines, they're going to figure out how to draw them to serve their interests. Mm-hmm. So it needs to be done not by politicians, but by a committee. Okay. Okay. So w- do you see that environment in the current in the current legislature? Like, let's just say you win, you're sworn in January, and you guys aren't meeting again till 20? No, 19. Oh, it will be 19. Yeah. Okay. Because it's like, every, it's four months or five months every year and a half, right? Six months out of every other year. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, but the next session is in 19. Yes. So you're, you're hitting the ground running mm-hmm. as soon as you're inaugurated. That's right. Okay. I always assume the sale. So you're, as soon as you're inaugurated, not, not uh, if, not if. That's when, right. Yeah. So, um, is the environment in the state legislature friendly to well, something like that, or do you think so? With the current people who are there right now, no, because mm-hmm. actually Representative Donna Howard did introduce a bill <clears throat> for an independent redistricting committee. Okay. However, it went to committee, and that committee never held any meetings. So, who knows what would have happened if it had gotten to the floor for a vote? Right. Right. And do you see a lot of that? I mean, because you, you obviously live here. You've been involved in this. Or, I mean, I, I went to one, I went to three sessions last year mm-hmm. um, just to watch the state reps do their thing. And then I went to the state Senate and it was like junior high versus high school. It was insane. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, the state reps, like, you know, no one's listening and they, they brought their kids, you know, and there's like all this stuff. And I'm going, this is like a homeroom. And then I go to the, st- the Senate. It was all very orderly. And, Having a hearing. And, and, yeah. You know, and the order will come to the, 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 the and, and everyone's like listening, attentive, you know, and, and it, it, obviously yeah. there's more reps than there are senators, but still right. it was just. Well, they start out the day with, uh, you know, resolutions and a lot of uh, bringing people in to right. recognize them. So it's, it's, it's kind of strange if you haven't seen it before. Right. Absolutely. So um, what, what, I mean, listen, every. Every incumbent president loses in the midterms. You know, it's not going to be a surprise when the Dems, if if they if they lose this, by the way, then they just they're, they are like Al Gore in two thousand. Like you deserve there's a problem. <laughs> you deserve to lose. And if you're Hillary Clinton, you got two billion dollars of DNC money. You got all the media after you. You got Jay Z and Beyonce coming to your fucking shows, and you lost to an orange game show host. Okay, you deserved to lose because that was your race to win. Right. Period. And so. And never say never, because usually incumbents, they they lose in the midterms. Yeah. But well, let, let, this, let, and that usually trickles down to the state level. Mm-hmm. So let's just say we have a, 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 a reasonable enough of a wipeout of the Republicans and the Democrats get in. Mm-hmm. How many of your colleagues do you think kind of think in, in, along your lines? Uh, I, I think that we could get an ind- independent redistricting set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And get rid of gerrymandering? I think it'll take a little time, but okay. yeah. And, and obviously because people like it. Both sides like it, don't they? Hmm. Well, I guess it depends on who's in power, wh- whether you like it at that moment. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, if, you, if you're in a blue county, mm-hmm. right, and, you know, it's been districted that way. Right. Even if you're a Democrat, you're going to go, whoa, 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 hang on. This has been working out really well for me for like the last 12 terms or whatever. Yeah. I mean, definitely there's some uh, some – strong Democrat holds, but I, I think people see the sense in having, you know, districts that are um, easier to understand. You know, I've got four different congressional districts within my house district. Okay. And so it's very confusing for people, you know, who's, who's should be one congressman for my house district because my district is smaller, right? right? It's very confusing to try to go around the district and say, oh, no, it's not Roger Williams here. It's not Roger Williams versus Julie Oliver. It's actually Joseph Kopser versus Chip Roy. Yeah. And how did that get broken up? That was it through gerrymandering that it got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like so, if like how old is your? Do you know how old your district is, or have an idea? Uh, you know, I'm not sure when the lines were redrawn. But is is it fairly new? Is it? I mean, is oh is, mine? Yeah. Oh, the House district was redrawn in 2011. Mm. Yeah. And that was your workman run. One correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, have you guys discussed your talking points in, in, in a potential debate? Have, have, you, have you have both camps met? And oh no. Okay. We haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> okay. But you're looking at September twelfth, right? Right. September twelfth. Oh. Okay. I don't know if he has uh, accepted the invitation. Right. Right. Well. So we'll and, see. and what's his record like? On what's his voting record like? I can only imagine, but you know, our listeners don't know. Uh, pretty much follows the Republican line. Right. 
just basically the 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 the, the Ted Cruz anti gay, anti education, anti Yeah, yeah. Muslims. I mean he voted for S B four, which is the show me your papers bill. He voted yeah. for the bathroom bill. He voted for ba- vouchers, um, any of the women's health care issues re- relating to abortions or, you know, chipping away at that, he yeah. voted for. Right. So, okay, so how how do you get your message out there, for example, that you, that, and, and, for, and forget palpable, okay? I mean, who cares? I mean, I think, I think the job of the politician, the job of the press, which has been gone for a long time now, is to educate people, not placate them. Mm-hmm. You know, what we have now, and, and this is where I run into a lot of friction with people that I know personally or folks online that always, you know, throw stuff at me because they don't like what I say, <laughs> whatever. I'm not gonna be invited to Thanksgiving dinner anyway, so I don't <laughs> care. I mean, it's fun for me. I like to be hated, so it's okay. Um, but the but in all seriousness though, um, they, they just gravitate into their little niche. They just wanna be, they just want confirmation, not information. So God forbid, like for example, I'm a big fan of the idea of a $15 minimum wage, which is still not livable, livable, but it's better than 10. Right. And so I was talking to somebody the other day and they go, well, how do you expect small businesses to do that? And we're sitting in a bar and I go, well, very easy. You take $200 billion out of defense, which we, we spend about a, a, a trillion two right now. Mm-hmm. We have 1400 bases all over the world. We got a, like a million and a half guys all over the world. How about we take $200 billion out of that, put it in a department of labor, and a business under 100 employees can apply for a subsidy. So if he can only afford $11 an hour, well, now we give him the extra $4 an hour. Now that guy's making more money. He's paying more taxes and putting money into the economy because the stock market, by the way, is not the economy. Right. So when, I don't care if it's Obama or Bush or Cheeto Jesus, when they say, well, the stock market's doing great, doesn't mean jack shit to me. <laughs> you know. And frankly, I'm a big fan of nationalizing the banks. Between Bush and Obama, we loan those guys $29 trillion at zero interest so hmm. they can loan it back to me at three to five to 18% interest on a credit card? Screw that. I say we let the government do it and I can get a car loan for 2%. I can get a house loan for one to 2% and get a 10% credit card and mm-hmm. government revenues. Isn't that neat? So getting back to the minimum wage yeah. part of it. Sure. We can I, do that in Texas. I think businesses can do that. Mm-hmm. You know, again, if you are paying your employees a living wage, they're uh-huh. going to go out and spend that money. Right. They're going to buy things. Right. And so that just keeps the circle going. Right. I, I don't think that they would need to be subsidized, to be honest. Well, see, but here's the thing. The, 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 the types of businesses that we have now compared to, say, what we had in the, in the 50s and 60s and even through the 70s, mm-hmm. when we actually had manufacturing and higher profit margins to play with, this is why we created a middle class. And now it's Taco Bell. It's Walmart. Well, it's, yeah, we sell everything so cheap that we can't pay our labor force. Right. And this is this is back. Yeah. This is like the Pullman strikes in the in, in the eighteen hundreds when when you know George Pullman owned the town of Pullman, Illinois. The, you know the Pullman car, mm-hmm. and he rented the houses to the workers in Pullman, and then he cut their wages, <laughs> but he raised their rent, and then he had all the general stores, and he raised the prices there, so they had a strike. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time I think Eugene Debs went to jail. And it was in the eighteen nineties before Woodrow Wilson put him in jail for running for president. God forbid. Um, but all that to say that. It just seems to be lost on the so-called conservative. If you're a friend of the business owner, wouldn't it make sense to have people that can afford to buy the crap that you're making or at least go into your store? Exactly. That's that's the whole point. You know, pay them a living wage. They're going to buy things and that just keeps revolving. See, but this is why I think the Department of Labor subsidy would be a decent idea because I think a lot of these companies, like a bar, for example, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, like there's bars I go to in Austin here all the time, restaurants. Mm-hmm. A lot of those guys, it's a single location. Or maybe maybe a family chain, two or three shops, <clears throat> and they don't have that profit margin that they can afford to mm. put fifteen dollars in. You know what I mean? And so maybe it would be better to af- afford them a subsidy and not have to. Well, I don't know. Spend it bombing people and wonder why we got refugees and terrorists. Surprise! It's basic math. Yeah, I guess. I, I, and we could do it here in Texas, couldn't we? I mean, you just said we spent eight hundred million dollars mm-hmm. at the border. Mm-hmm. We got a Department of Labor here in Texas, don't we? Yeah. Can we kick them a few bucks and go, hey, you know, Shakespeare's Pub. I like those guys. Can you pay them 15 bucks an hour? <laughs> you know, I go to the ZZ Tiger a couple times a month. Can you pay them 50? I go to Schultz's Beer Garden. I love those people. Can, you know, before the UT game. Yay. You know, yeah. and, I don't know. I'd have to see the math. I mean, yeah. I, again, I, I feel like these businesses could afford it. Okay. But then 
again, you know, I mean, I, I deal with different types of businesses every day and some yeah. can, and, and I agree with you, and some right. cannot. Yeah. I and mean, if you're a construction company, more than likely you can. Yeah. You know, but if you're a restaurant or a school, private school, you know, um, how do you? Hmm. It, it's it, it's a lot of money. It's a, it, it's an extra four or five bucks an hour multiplied by however many employees. And then obviously you gotta pay your tax on that, but then the employee has more money to go out and spend in the economy. And it's been proven time and time again. I mean, we've had wages stagnate since Reagan cut taxes in 1986. They have mm-hmm. not gone up. Right. And so the Republican canard of, uh, when we cut taxes, it imp- no, it doesn't. Those guys do stock buybacks and spend billions of dollars to buy their stocks back and give them cushy raises and more bonuses mm-hmm. on our money. And you know, I, I, and then when this last tax cut that you know Agent Orange did, and it was, oh no, no, I, I'm getting money on my check every month. Yeah, that's a payday advance on your refund. What do you what do you get every month every year back? Five hundred. Speaking of payday advances, so uh, Workman's gotten money from payday lenders. Which I think payday lenders uh, should go away. Uh huh. And it's interesting that Timothy Geithner now has a company. He's the president now of a bank who does payday lending. Hmm. I think that's interesting that a guy that had 5.1 million uh, foreclosures baked into the quote recovery hmm. of the last banking scandal, right? You know, which which is a which is a bipartisan fiasco. Yep. You know, I mean, when Clinton got rid of um, Glass Steagall, you had Alfred E. Newman come into the White House. And he just put his foot on the gas. And I'm sorry, I don't, where, where did the myth that Republicans are fiscally conservative? I mean, I think they were through Nixon. And that was it. Mm-hmm. Because Reagan sure as hell wasn't. He took us back. He took us to our first trillion dollar deficit. Isn't that adorable? Right. Yeah. We, it, was only a tr- it was only a trillion dollars. Well, isn't that cute? Now it's 22 trillion. Like in, tw- in 30 years, it went from 1776, I think we owed $4, you know, to like 1980. And by the time Reagan and Bush left office, we were a trillion, our first trillion dollars in debt. I think their definition of fiscal conservative is a little different than what reality. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit. So, so what would you call fiscal conservatism? Well, I think- And I mean, the, I I mean the, small, I, C, small C conservatism. DS like should be that you're balancing your budget. You're not spending more than you're bringing in. Okay. I think that's the basic gist of it, right? Uh, supposedly, it should be. Mm-hmm. But we're not creating ways to revenue. And people look at taxes as a sin, and I don't believe all taxes are stupid. Mm-hmm. I think some taxes are stupid, you know, but not all taxes are stupid. Right. And this is where I always go back to the conservatives when they're like, oh, you're about socialism. You like airports? Right. Do you like airports? Because either the county, the state, or the city owns those airports, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if American or United own those airports, that $200 round trip that I take to Christmas to see my mom mm-hmm. would be 1500 bucks. But or- because the city, or in this case, Austin, owns the airport, they take care of all the stuff, all the car- tarmacs, all the cleaning and everything, and United and Southwest, whatever, they just pay the rent. Hmm. That's socialism. That's democratic socialism. Right. No I one's mean, taking over anything. A lot of examples of it, and we don't call it socialism. And so, again, people, that, that word just creates such a fear. They confuse with people, communism, though. Yeah, I think so. They, no, I'm, I'm, you're being kind. They confuse with communism. Mm-hmm. I've had people to my face not tell me the difference. Mm-hmm. And even then... The exercise of communism has never been done right. I mean, if you read it, hmm. yeah, it's not not that bad. But then, you know, you know, Stalin wasn't a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not very well. Wasn't carried out very well. Yeah, yeah. wasn't carried out very well. It's like, you know, and, and then and I saw, oh my God, I saw this stupid documentary the other night and I'll just go ahead and say it because I haven't been saying it to anybody because I, I don't want him to get any credit, but I'll just say it because he's stupid. This guy named Dinesh D'Souza, you know who he is? Hmm. I got dragged this documentary by my two friends and they agreed. It was pretty dopey and one-sided. Mm-hmm. And he was trying to compare, you, 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 don't drink water because you're going to laugh. He was trying to compare Lincoln to Trump. Not even trying. He was blatantly comparing Lincoln to Trump. Nine, and his big claim to fame was about eight, nine years ago, six, seven years ago. I guess um, Obama had put him in, got him put in jail for some uh, uh, com- campaign contribution chicanery. I guess he had, like, mm. you know, didn't do something right on his taxes. And, and yeah. this was back when, you know, the Patriot Act had been passed and, you know, basically everything that Nixon did was made legal by Bush and Obama. So they put this guy in jail. So his big, you know, conservative flag was, yeah, Obama put me in jail. And I'd seen him interviewed a couple times and not really listening. So, I thought, okay, I'll go see the thing. Stupidest thing I've ever seen. I, I cannot get that time back. And he's talking about the the greatness of the Republicans and the evil of the Democrats. And he spends all this time comparing them to the Nazi Germany and Hitler. Oh, man. Because Hitler had single payer. I'm like, whoa, really? And he ignores all of Teddy Roosevelt's presidency, which the guy was basically a socialist. He's the guy who threatened labor or um, lumber, rather, Hmm. steel, rail. 
um, banking, if you don't deal with labor, I'm going to nationalize you. I'm going to send the National Guards in and take your stuff, and I'm going to deal with labor. So yeah, deal with labor, or you deal with me. Hmm. And they're like, okay. And it went good for a little bit, and then Taft came in, and the whole thing fell apart. But Roosevelt was a Republican who started national parks, who was pro-labor, who was pro-union, and you're kind of going, hmm, isn't that interesting that this guy would leave out an entire eight-year presidency of one of the most famous Republicans to make Mm -hmm. his dopey, stupid point? Right. Well, I think the Republican Party has changed quite a bit. Well, it has. I mean, there's good... (laughs) It's not Eisenhower out there anymore. Let's just let's just say that. Yep. You know, and even Eisenhower had problems with. I mean, if you go into any presidency, candidly speaking, mm-hmm. you're gonna have problems with anybody. That you, you know, what I mean, because there's things that they got to do. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, and sometimes they do some sneaky crap that they shouldn't be doing. And right. it's if it's expedient, you make the deal with the devil, you know, right? But but all that to say that you know the, these kinds of things, for example, with, with the with the so-called conservative in this country, where they leave it like this guy, for example, in this idiot documentary, he left out the entire House on American Activities Committee. Hmm. Joe McCarthy was a Republican. McCarthyism is Republican. Hmm. And Eisenhower didn't do anything about it because he didn't want to get his hands dirty. So he just backed off. He didn't want to lose his base. So he, you know, that was one of the things I didn't like about him. He just, he did nothing. He, privately, he thought the guy was a scumbag, but he did nothing about it. Yeah. So, but, but McCarthy was a Republican. So you're gonna sit there and talk to me about Democrats being like Hitler when a Republican actually pulled super SS type stuff in this country. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, this is where I get really tired of the parties. <clears throat> so anyway, all that to say, um, with Workman and his policies, and obviously he can't affect the entire state, he's just one rep. Right, well, so he, he has said that he will undo, uh, and he's already undone, some of the city ordinances that Austin puts forth. Um, right now it's the earn sick leave. He doesn't believe that a city should be able to mandate that employers give their employees uh, paid sick time off. Okay. In, in, okay. In, in California where I'm from, mm-hmm. and people hate me because I'm from California, but we do a couple of things better. We drive better than y'all here. True story. <laughs> Been here three and a half years. You guys drive like babies. You really do. <laughs> drive like a bunch of babies. There's no ballet. There's no There's no co-dancing. It's like, it's just, it's a mess. It, mm. the, the, and it rains and y'all act like you saw rain for the first time. So you're, you're in Texas. <laughs> the, yeah. And the other thing is y'all don't have right to work. Mm. Or you have right to work. You don't have collective bargaining here. Right. And out of 254 counties, only nine have collective bargaining. And they had to fight tooth and nail to get it. Mm-hmm. Can, can we get that done on a state level to avoid stuff like this? Because mm-hmm. if you had collective bargaining, you would have paid sick leave. You would have right. that stuff just baked into every deal that the unions make. Right. Could, could we do that in, in Texas? I, I don't know. How attached are people to right to work? I mean, you live here longer than me. Mm-hmm. How, how attached are people to right to work? Because I honestly think that they think the euphemism is true. It's been... Wh- it's been around, well, it's the unions. Again, I think union is a word that a lot of people kind of have a knee-jerk reaction to. Right. They don't, they don't get that the unions have provided some really good beneficial things to employees. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a way for people to have a louder voice to get, you know, living wage, to get health and safety yeah. uh, benefits yeah. from their employers. Right. It's pretty simple. And, it, and you would think that People could see, oh, okay, sure, we want to have our employees taken care of. We want to have employees have good working conditions, safe working conditions. Mm -hmm. Have have, have you run in any, have have you, well, you're probably talking a lot of, you're you're in your district, so you're probably talking probably a lot of like-minded folks. How many many Republicans are you running into when you're out walking and doing your thing? Um, Not, not, not a lot. Yeah. It, it, and that's you know like, how how do you like how do you get into that space how do you get into that arena how do you get into their you know I try to go to as many meetings as I can say mm-hmm. for example a traffic meeting traffic's a huge issue in Central Texas you know the roads are pretty congested so you go to a traffic meeting there's five six hundred people that show up all right so I uh, go around and talk to as many as I can at events like that just um, through Chamber of Commerce meetings through um, Civic Club meetings. So I go to those as much as possible. But a lot of times you don't get into an in-depth conversation like you would at a candidate forum. Sure. What are some of your hot button issues that you focus on? Public education. You know, we need to pay our teachers better. Just the other day when I was block walking, I came across a family whose daughter is in Australia. She went to Australia to teach. Why didn't she stay here? Because she can make more money in Australia. And live in Australia. (laughs) And live in Australia <laughs> and be at the beach and, yeah. You know. Yeah, you know, I tell people, well, Texas ha- isn't the worst. Oklahoma cut out Monday school. 
couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. No, Nin- I know. 97 districts got rid of school on Monday. And, you know, the idea was they could cut their teacher pay by 20%. One day a week, you cut it 20%. See, and, and this is something I cannot prove. This is complete theory. I believe in conspiracy theory. I believe in conspiracy fact. If you're going to tell me that the moon went landing didn't happen, that's a conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. If you're going to tell me that, you know, we've illegally invaded a bunch of countries, that's a fact because the aftermath is true, right? So this is a theory, what I'm going to say, but I think the Department of Education in 1981 under the Reagan administration was a long-term planned conspiracy to destroy education in this country because every district in California that I went to school mm. and some districts in New York, I mean, I went to Los Angeles Unified Public School and now it's like home of South Central and all, you know, all the horror stories you hear out horror stories you hear out of LA Mm -hmm. are in that district. And we were like a top 10 district when I was a kid, Hmm. you know, and I I got out of school in 1981, that's how old I am. And we had like real education. I mean, I was was never in an AP class and I got got a lot out of quite a few teachers. You know, Mm -hmm. it was was just a different level. We taught civics, you know, like we were taught critical thinking. I think that was purposefully removed. You know, you know, that was in the Republican platform. I don't know if it still is, but that they don't. Be- I think they took it out because to- anyway, they got press. Uh, right. We don't believe in critical thinking skills or critical thinking skills aren't a part of. Fuck no. <laughs> education. No, no. Listen, Robert McNamara purposefully in, in, under Johnson, Robert McNamara purposefully dumbed down the requirements for drafting people because he didn't want the smart guys getting drafted and coming back and telling everybody what was happening in Vietnam. So mm-hmm. you get the dumb guys that do what they're told, hmm. you know, and he, he like, see, he, he dumped, because before he had this, like, you know, there's like an IQ test. Hmm. Let's get rid of that. Can they, do they have all 10 fingers and 10 toes? Are they breathing? Let's get them out there, right? And so, yeah, I mean, it, it, but isn't it logical though? I mean, like it's emotionally, intellectually dishonest to tell me the last 20 years, and I don't want to sound like my father, you know, like when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> a guy would come out, kill a chicken and roll in broken glass and that was show business. You know, I, I don't want to sound like that guy, mm-hmm. but I'm seeing people not that much younger than me, you know, like kind of the cutoff mid eighties on, you know, late eighties on where it just became more and more and more about, and, and we got rid of shop classes, for example. Like yeah. You, we, not I everybody goes to college. There's still a divide. You know, we have our good schools and we have our schools that aren't as as good one of the schools in austin that's really super performing is lasa the liberal arts and science academy okay and i've i've asked you know why does this school do so well because they were able to hire uh masters and phds for their for their teachers and why can't they replicate it because we don't have enough money to hire that caliber of teacher for another school see and this is what's interesting so for example in california i know guys i used to substitute teach about 15 18 years ago and I did it from 2001, 2004 for a few years when I was in between stuff, things. Mm-hmm. I, I was in entertainment my whole life. Late 30s, we lost our film deal. I was floating around. And, I, and then I ended up doing what I'm doing now, which is interesting. But I worked with a ton of teachers then who were making really good money. Hmm. And the starting was a little tough. But if you took all the classes and did all your stuff and got your master's, man, I, I got a buddy of mine who's getting ready to retire after like 30 years of teaching. He's, I'm 54, he's just turned 53. Hmm. He's retiring in two years. And I, th- I, I know he pulls down over hundred grand a year, hmm. and he's rep- he's going to retire it like he's waiting two more years so he can get the full ninety percent of his pay, plus benefits for life. And people sit there and they go, "Oh, that's not fair." Well, that's kind of fair, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's kind of fair because here, here, uh, and I'll tell you exactly. Like, I, I'm I'm completely transparent. So up until about two thousand one or two, three, I was pretty like libertarian, mm-hmm. where I was like you know, liberal on some things and conservative on some things. And then, you know, I, and I had a big problem with welfare in my head. Da, 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 da. And then I watched what we did in Iraq under Bush. Mm-hmm. And I saw how much money we spent. And we didn't find any weapons. There wasn't any. It was a big, great, beautiful lie. Right. And I was, I was like, well, shit, I'd rather give the money to a single mom with three kids, let her get some milk and eggs. You know, those one or two people that rip it off, one or two, one or two percent of people that rip it off, fine, you bust them. Right. And, and get them. But the rest of the people that need it, and you don't, yeah. treat, and you don't treat them like second class citizens for collecting it. You don't, you don't invade right. their home and investigate their home and, and, right. and, and, and go through their underwear drawers and things. And, and you know what I mean? Yeah. You treat them like human beings. And we just don't seem to want to make that investment. Right. Well, yeah, we have to rely on phil- philanthropy to do that. And that's another reason I'm running for this race is I have I joined a group called Impact Austin. Okay. It's 400 women who pool their resources. And every year we give out five grants of about 80,000 each to nonprofits. And so I was on the grant review committee for the health and wellness. And we had 38 applicants. 
nonprofits that were serving people, for example, moms that needed help. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just saw so many people fall through the cracks. Look at all these organizations that have to be there to help the people that are falling through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be that way. No, it, it, it shouldn't be that way. And, and that's the thing is we've demonized folks that need help. Mm -hmm. And what the top 0.01% of folks that want to keep the system going, they want to loot the treasury, send our kids to die in miniature dirt wars for nothing. We, we're endless war. We, 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 this is the longest phase of war we've been in. It's in three years we get a gold watch. You know, <laughs> that's not my joke. I mean, I, I stole it. But um, but yeah, and, and in the meantime, we, we, we demonize the worker. You know, I remember a, few, a couple of years back when the fast food guys were on strike and it was like, you know, pissed at them for wanting $15. And I'm like, well, you guys, like, the guy makes your food. Can you, like, at least be nice to the guy that makes your food? <laughs> like, I used to wait tables. I work with some maniacs. They, they, they would do things to your food if you're mean to them. <laughs> like, and, and we were, we used to carry Visine in our apron. And, and if you were mean to us, it was odorless, colorless, and tasteless. I put it in your salad mm -hmm. and just pure saline. Goes through you like string through a duck. Within 35 minutes, you're in the bathroom. Montezuma's Revenge. Oh my God, I'm sick. I got to leave. Okay, get out of my station because you're, oh, <laughs> you're, you're a mean person. <laughs> oh, we were horrible. And I did it maybe three times a month. I worked with a guy who did it three times a night. And I'm like, oh. I, I was like talking down. Dude, you don't do it. No, she, he looked at me. Like, Dude, you really need it. You need therapy. You need professional help. Like <laughs> really that many people. But 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 seriously though, we've demonized the worker. And, and, and you look at, Everyone says, you know, Trump divided the country. I think we've been divided for a long time because as long as we've had people manipulate the media and manipulate um, the Congress in such a way that they can get what they want, mm -hmm. then you get the poor and the middle classes fighting amongst themselves. So you demonize the Muslim, you demonize the poor, you demonize the single mom, the welfare person. Right, and I think the average person just doesn't know the people that we're talking about. You know, if they're doing well, again, they may be in their little bubble. They don't know about the single moms and, and what their real story is and right. why they're in the position they're in. Right. You know, we tend to believe that, well, you get what you deserve or, you know, if you have a rags to riches story, it was all your hard work. There's really a lot of luck. A lot of luck and a lot of help. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've had a ton of support in my life. Yep. Ton of support in my life. I've had mentors. I, every phase of my life, where, where I've been in several careers, I, I, I've had mentors helping me along the way, advising me along the way. Yeah. To act like you did it all by yourself. Right. That's just, that's just, like, that's just arrogant. Well, and you also brought up the um, vocational education, the fact that we don't have much of that anymore. And that's actually, that's becoming a problem because we don't have plumbers, electricians, all the tradespeople, you know, they're, they're uh, getting older and ready to retire and not the same number of people coming into the business. No, I, I, like, I, I grew up in South Central. It, actually, it was called South LA back then, but now it's South Central. But <laughs> I, I, I grew up in a union town. I grew up in Southgate, California. We had General Motors. We had Ford, Firestone, Bethlehem Steel, Jurgensen Steel. We, we had everything. We had, down in the South Bay, we had uh, McDonnell Douglas. We had all these plants and companies. And mm -hmm. each one of these plants employed like 1,000 to 1,500 people in one town. So people were driving in from Bell and Cudahy and Downey. And so, but all that to say, when, when those jobs went away, it, it, was, it was profound. Mm -hmm. It was profound. And, and that's the thing is we, we take away the vehicle when people go, you know, well, they just don't have the right attitude. I could, if I, you could have, you could be the most personally developed uh, French fry maker and you've attended every Tony Robbins seminar every time he comes to town and you're just ready to go and God damn, I'm the best fries today and they're gonna be crispy and they're gonna be just like McDonald's, watch them, blah, 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 you know, and you sweep ahead of time and no one no one ever asks you if you got time to lean, you got time to clean. They never say any of that to you. you, you best attitude ever. But if your vehicle isn't that great. Right. Right, and we took those jobs away. And I think that's why, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in New York and people are like, you know, trying to take a field day, to take a running stab at her. I'm like, did you see Joe Crowley? One hard to beat, you know, like a 10 term <laughs> doorknob who was, he, but he was fourth behind, he was the fourth guy in the in the Congress. He was right behind Nancy Pelosi to say, okay, have you seen Nancy Pelosi? Have you heard her talk in the last 20 years ever? Yeah, it was easy. Took it to, for granted. It was, be, it was easy and he was lazy yeah. and he had no platform. Yeah. And she's saying the things that we're talking about. Right. She's talking about education. She's talking about, and, and this is the thing, like the reason I brought up where I grew up mm -hmm. was my 10 year reunion was 1991. Mm -hmm. So all the guys that went, I went to college, right? And, and, and maybe 20% of people, I don't think the statistic has changed in 30 years. 20% of people try college. Hmm. Fewer graduate, fewer go on to postgraduate work. Right. So all that to say, 1991, I'm at my high school reunion, ran into a ton of guys. And 
all the guys that took metal and auto and wood, they had great jobs. Mm-hmm. They were working union gigs in California, there, and especially in LA, they're they're working at all the film studios, building sets and and welding things, and you know, right. 50, fifty bucks an hour in nineteen eighties nineties money, not bad, not bad. And they're you know putting their kids through school and they yeah. and college and high school and whatever, and you know, and and they buy cars and they go on vacations. Yeah, we stopped teaching that stuff. Well, I think a lot of our, our or some of our tradespeople make as much, if not more, than teachers. If if they if they do it. Mm-hmm. But where do they where do they get those skills now? They they, they just got to go to a vocational school, right? Yeah, there's some programs, not a lot. We probably could Im- improve and increase the number of programs that there are for sure. But is, there are right. some apprenticeship programs too. In fact, I went to um, I went to a meeting the other night, and the Building and Trades Union meeting, and met a woman who was there trying to get more women into their apprenticeship program. Wow! I mean, it was open to everybody, but she she especially enjoyed seeing the women walk into the room. She'd be yeah. like, "Hey." You need you want to join our apprenticeship program? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and so, and, and 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 I'm I'm ignorant. I mean, I thought I thought about running for a few weeks last year, mm-hmm. and you know, the person I was going to run against actually is pretty cool, and I wasn't really jiving with the people I was kind of working with. I, I I'm from California, and it's just different out here. So I just <laughs> I, I should run a podcast and drink beer, <laughs> mind my own business. Um, but what is the big challenge? We, like, I think it's just a shift in language, right? So, like, for example, last fall, mm-hmm. the Congress deregulated the banks again. Like, we didn't learn our lesson from 1999 and 2008, and right. we're going to do it again. Right. And so we're going to be due for another huge-ass bubble, and capitalism has a tendency to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just bubbles and crashes and bubbles and crashes. And now that we've just completely took the brakes off of banking, and they could just do whatever— taking the word regulations and getting rid of that and calling them protections, I think changes things. You know, like if you call them protections, people pay attention more. If you say regulations, ooh, I don't like regulations. Well, yeah, you got a point there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you if you, if you you were to, instead of calling it an expenditure, you call it an investment. Right. Because dead, yeah. people, pe- dead people don't pay taxes. So if we had single payer and they were alive to work, we get revenue because <laughs> they're alive to pay taxes, right? If we educate them and they're making a few more dollars, we're not having to bust their ass to get fifteen dollar minimum wage, they, they're going to be in a vocation at least that can get them twenty five, thirty dollars an hour. Right. So, you know, is is I mean, I in your campaign, do you, you see you see yourself, for example, like like playing with some of this stuff? I mean, you're you're talking to the people every day. You're block walking. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, people. So when I'm block walking, oftentimes I'll start off with my big issue is public education and supporting that. And what is yours? And so sometimes they'll, and I'll go into a little more detail mm-hmm. and they'll say, yeah, I agree with all those. Usually if you give up and leave a pause there, they'll say, oh, well, and also, mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. the other day, you know, it was sidewalks. This guy said, if you could get some sidewalks in the Hudson Bend area, we would vote for you. <laughs> he says, you know, we pay our taxes. We pay our county taxes. Yeah. Look at, look at the ditch on either side of the road here. People that are unable to drive you know, are not able to get to the grocery store. Right. So pretty simple want. Right. Not really a state level issue. It's more of a county level issue. But, but if you, you help know. the county get some money, right? Yeah. And, but see, and, and this is the thing too, and we've got a few minutes to start wrapping up a little bit, but, but, but see, this is the thing too, is, as a, for instance, um, when people tell me, oh, I'm not really political. I'm like, oh, bullshit. Listen, if you, if you care about the pothole in the street or who's going to pay the fireman to get the cat out of the tree, then you're political. Right. You, know? you have a leader who's going to listen to you. Yeah. Call you back and help you out. Yeah. And and that's the thing, too, is that, you know, you can talk about politics without having to call people names. And I had this brilliant speech teacher, speech teacher in college who didn't teach me how to enunciate at all whatsoever, <laughs> as this hour has clearly pointed out. Um, but he used to he used to tell us all the time, you could talk about anything as long as you don't insult somebody. As soon as you insult somebody, you lost your argument. Mm-hmm. You know, like in his big taboo was like sex, religion, politics. Oh, you don't talk about those things. Yeah, you can. As long <laughs> as you don't like call people names and insult their tie. Right. You can say whatever you want. Right. And I'm like, all right, because they're listening to your idea. And then you listen to their idea. And then you d- discuss why they have their idea. And maybe you can, you know, yeah. agree or not agree, whatever. But you can have those discussions and not get, you know, hanging up on the phone or, you know, screaming at people or calling them, right. you know, idiot names or something. And so... I think with with most people, if they're if they're really being honest, yeah, they're political. Mm-hmm. I think if most people are being honest, they can't tell me the system is working. Right. Ooh. Yeah, a lot. Of, you have to take a lot of these issues back to a higher level and say, you know, we all agree. For example, we all agree that we should have a good health care system, right? That's the 
pretty high level. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how do we how do we get there? Well, the system that we've got right now, we spend in the U.S. more than any other country and have worse outcomes. Yes. Okay. So that's the reality. How do we get to spending less and having a better outcome? And then you just have to, you know, you're going to get so many different ideas. As many people as are in the room, you're going to have that many different ideas. So yeah. then you have to say, okay, let's let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty complicated. It's hard to do that block walking. But some of the things that I have heard are, um, you know, teacher retirement pay mm-hmm. is another big issue. And that ties into healthcare, to be honest. Sure does. Because they haven't gotten a raise in 13 years, but their health insurance has gone up substantially. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I work with I work with a, a, a county sheriff's department out here. We're, you know, and um, they haven't had a raise in 13 years. And I've been working with them for a year and a half. And they've been discussing this with the county for the last year and a half. And they're still in the middle of it. Mm. And I'm like, wait, are, why are you still discussing a raise? And if we had collective bargaining, like Bear County's got collective bargaining. Mm-hmm. Those guys, and they, they, they had to get it on the ballot. And they, I know those guys. I, I know a couple of the sheriffs at the county, Bear County sheriffs. Mm-hmm. And they had to get it on the ballot to get collective bargaining. And they walk like a duck and talk like a duck. I and mean, when I met with them last year and they were talking about what they did, I go like, I was so used to the right to work stuff when I was dealing with law enforcement and fire. And they go, no, man, we got a 9% raise and 4% over the next four years and our benefit, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> How did you do that in Texas? Oh, we got collective bargaining. Did David Copperfield become the county supervisor? <laughs> How did you do that? And he told me exactly what they did. You know, it took them a couple of years and they had it like really bash it out hmm. and so but they have the benefit the fire you know the teachers can can you know, collective bargain down there so this and this is the thing where people like fight against their own interests when they keep insisting that right to work is and they hear these anecdotal stories yeah you know well the union guy he had this job and he didn't deserve it but he kept it see because he was in the union and i'm like yeah and then the boss because there was no union could effectively screw you you're missing the big picture you're missing the big picture because <laughs> now your boss can screw you without cause and then you're done it's like yeah collective bargaining you, right. you don't have it and so but between that and then vocational training mm-hmm. can we get that back in the schools yeah. And that's something that's something you yeah. can do. That's something yeah. that, you know, and and again, yeah, and I think there's bipartisan support on that to be honest. I think that Workman actually supports vocational education in the schools. Has yeah. to. Look yeah. at the, look at what's going on. I mean, and and that's the thing too is that when you call those things investments mm-hmm. and not expenditures. Right. It's an, again a language thing. And and you know, just Absolutely. I, I remember when ACA was passing and I I think ACA is horrible, but anyway, a lot of people got benefited from it and I know people that lie about their income to get it. So neener neener. But <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel did this thing, man on the street thing. It was hilarious. Mm-hmm. And he's asking a person the same question. Hey, how do you think, what do you think about the Affordable Care Act? Oh, I think it's awesome. Oh, what yeah. What do you think we, about Obamacare? Yeah. Oh, communism. <laughs> and they're losing their mind. And I'm going, wait, he just said the same thing. Like, yeah, I know. But, but, but that's how, I hate to say it, that's how dumb most people are, A and B. You just change the shift in language. Right. And bang, it's like, wow, yeah. expending investment. Protections, right. regulations. It's yeah. like boom, boom. You know what I mean? Exactly. So we need leaders who are willing to invest in the future of Texas. And are you do? Are you willing to do it? And I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, listen, we're going to have to start wrapping up here. Uh, my guest has been Vicki Goodwin. She is running for House District 47 in the state of Texas. If you live in that district, come out and see her at the different events that she's participating in. She is working very hard to get your vote and she's not just expecting your vote, which is actually kind of refreshing in this day and age. (laughs) Uh, Guys, uh, also too, you could become a uh, bitter pill by going to patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. And if this stuff makes you uncomfortable, it's supposed to, so sleep tight.